Hi, I'm Ryan from Amber Elm. So this week, I wanted to talk a little bit about ways you can add color to your tracks. Now, there are probably countless ways to do this, especially depending on the type of music you like to write, but I wanted to focus on some of my go-tos when I'm looking to add just a different dimension, you know, a little bit more interest, a little color. I kind of broke them down into two camps. The first camp is during the writing or the tracking stage, and the second is during the mixing stage. And the differences I'm gonna talk about are really subtle, but adding a lot of subtleties over and over in the course of one track really does add up, and you end up with a drastically different result than you started with. You know, it's time consuming, but it's worth it. So in the first writing tracking stage camp, we have doubling lines with different instruments. I like to do this in sporadic spots, especially if it's a line that's been used before. The second or third time it comes around, it's nice to give it something, something extra. extra. Uh, that way the listener can either hear it again in a different way, not tune it out, or just give it another dimension for them to appreciate. Because I write a lot of stuff on piano, I end up doubling a lot with electric piano, typically a road sound, and I may overuse the road sound. But sometimes with marimba or a synth, it doesn't really matter what I use anyways, you can kind of use any instrument that you think is a nice complement and isn't gonna overpower the original. For example, I wouldn't double a, like a sweet violin line with a tuba, and that was a weird and dumb example, but I also wouldn't necessarily double it with something too similar. So like a synth line, I wouldn't double with a similar sounding synth line. I need to get better with my examples. But also don't listen to me and do whatever you want. That's actually what makes music unique. I actually find it really interesting how many times people, myself included, follow certain advice from other creators like to a T. And at the end of the day, we're all usually looking to find our own unique sound. So it's kind of hard to do that when you're copying someone else or taking all their advice way too precisely. I guess the point of all this is to learn a bunch of the ways people typically do things and and the rules so we can kind of decide how we want to break from them. I think that sounds nice. We're going to go with that one. Another way I like to add a little color is to harmonize lines. It's like doubling, but with some more flair, Ric Flair. I especially like doing this when a line is looping or repeating a bunch of times. It's also good if a melody line is coming back around for a second or third time, you know, it just gives it a new color or flavor. If we head over to the mixing camp, there are about a billion ways to add color, especially nowadays. In every major DAW, there are so many stock plugins that you could slap on for a bit of some extra color. You could spend a really long time messing with them too and mangling sounds. It's always a good idea to have a pretty strong vision for how you want to add the color before you just start adding plugins. Uh, you can get pretty down the rabbit hole. Um, unless you're just exploring and looking for new ideas, then go nuts. But if you're trying to finish up and you wanna add just something like a little extra, try this. Automate the EQ. You can try this in different sections on different instruments and the sound will completely change. It can add interest in a line, it can bring attention to something that may have been hidden, or it can just add some extra color. You can take something like this. And turn it into something like this. And before I go on, if you like this video or just content on music composition or dudes with beards ranting about trying to be original, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It would really mean a lot uh, and help support the growth of the channel. My hope is to create a place where we can share ideas, ask questions of anyone in the community and grow together. That's all I wanted to say, but I don't really know how to end this part. The last way I wanted to mention is using a parallel track. Say you have a piano line, get it the way you like and leave it. Copy it down to a new track 
and mess with that track to your heart's desire. Once you have a really nice mangled piano, you can bury it low in the mix, automate it so it's more apparent in certain areas, even have it take the lead for a moment or two, it doesn't really matter. What does matter is that it will add a nice new color. Here's a quick example of what I mean. Instead of just having this piano line, I can add this parallel piano line that's been beat to all hell and sprinkle it in when I want. All of these little ideas of how to add color may seem really basic and simple, and they are. Nothing is too crazy or difficult to figure out how to do. The point of it isn't to try to add something that's gonna like steal the show. The whole point is just to add a little color. And all color does is add a little extra complexity and interest. If there are ways I didn't talk about, which I'm sure there are, please feel free to share them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys are doing. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.